It's just me this episode, but stick around for the end. I want to hear your opinions. This is Threatwire. On December 11th, Europol published an article announcing that they've seized 27 of the most popular DDoS websites. This takedown was a joint collaboration not just of Europol, but of cybersecurity interested agencies from across the globe. Beyond domain seizure, three operators were arrested and 300 service users were identified and acted against in the takedown. The seizures focused on websites that provided booter and stressor services, but we know that basically translates to DDoS attacks. The festive season has long been a peak period for hackers to carry out some of their most disruptive DDoS attacks, causing severe financial loss, reputational damage, and operational chaos for their victims. The motivations for launching such attacks vary from economic sabotage and financial gain to ideological reasons as demonstrated by hacktivist collectives such as Killnet or Anonymous Sedan. As a part of this operation, which they've dubbed Operation Power Off, there will also be a public push of advertisements against these kinds of services, specifically advertisements on Google-based platforms. Searching on Google for DDoS for Hire will result in ads showing deterrence messages. YouTube will be playing ads on those who search for DDoS for Hire tools on the platform as well. Ending the year off strong on the last Patch Tuesday of 2024 comes a banger update. A new CVE has been patched by Microsoft, CVE 2024-49112. This CVE has been given a CVSS score of, drumroll please, a 9.8. Absolutely smashing score for the new CVE, dubbing it our CVE of the week. This CVE specifically affects the Windows Lightweight Directory Access Protocol and is a fully viable remote code execution vulnerability. To execute the CVE, an attacker sends a specifically crafted authenticated RPC call to the LDAP targeted system. The crafted RPC call must cause a domain controller lookup of the attacker's domain or cause connection to a malicious LDAP server. The CVE is so critical that one of the recommended mitigations from Microsoft is to, quote, ensure that domain controllers are configured to either not allow the internet or to not allow inbound RPC from untrusted networks. A new attack has been discovered by researchers that bypasses critical memory protections on AMD chips. The memory protections in question is the SEV SNP or Secure Encrypted Visualization Secure Nested Paging. This functionality is present in recent chips and is used to create a secure isolated execution environment to prevent hypervisor-based attacks. The attack was discovered as a part of a collaboration between several European-based universities. It utilizes a Raspberry Pi Pico, a breadboard, a few resistors, and wires, meaning that yes, this attack is viable for under 10 USD. The catch is that you need physical access to the AMD-based system. The attack takes place by connecting the Pi to the I2C interface on the DIMM module of the chip. This connection is used to modify the DDR4 and DDR5 to change the Serial Presence Detect, or SPD chip. By doubling the size of the DDR4 and DDR5 memory modules, it causes an aliasing effect, allowing two different addresses to refer to the same DRAM location. In our attacks, we double the apparent size of the dual inline memory module, DIMM, installed in the system to trick the CPU's memory controller into using additional ghost addressing bits. Bad RAM attackers can tamper with or replace ciphertext and even manipulate the crucial reverse map table data structure, thereby reintroducing potent page remapping attacks that initially prompted the development of SEV SNP. The paper reports this kind of attack is unusual. Other popular trusted execution environments like SGX, TDX, and CCA were tested and found to have alias checks to prevent these kinds of attacks. Normally, AMD considers physical attacks to be out of scope for their disclosure program. Due to the low cost of the attack, AMD decided to implement a mitigation and reward this attack. This project was awarded the CVE of CVE 2024-21944 with a CVSS score of 
The mitigation guide was released and we included it in the resources below. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of December 16th, 2024. If you want to support this show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. We really appreciate the support. As a heads up, there will most likely not be a threat wire next week as I will be moving. I will be moving to a larger space, which means that I will have a larger dedicated area for content creation. I am super excited, but that also means that my filming space will also be moving too, and I won't have internet there for a week. With the end of the year coming up, I would love to do something special for the last threat wire. I'm open to suggestions from the community, but I thought we could do a review of my top five favorite stories from 2024. What do you think? please let me know in the comments down below. But if there's something else you would like to see for the last episode, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, you can find me everywhere online at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.